Hi, I'm Charles with Handicap. The story begins as we watch someone barely managing to stay on a tightrope. Students gossip about how he just got into another fight and how he is nothing but trouble. Even the parents discuss how dangerous he is. Everyone thinks that he's too dangerous to even look at, but it's to be expected since everyone knows that he doesn't know how to interact with people. They insult his appearance, citing how he refuses to dye his hair black. Even the color of one of his eyes is wrong, and they use that to say that he must be cursed. Everyone thinks he is disgusting, and the kid eventually falls off the rope. We then see our angry protagonist for the first time named Sakura. He explains that he likes the strong, and couldn't care less about the weak. Nearby, some guys harass a girl, and wonder if she wants to go do something. She would like to bash some eggs over their heads, but that would just be a waste of good eggs. The guy warns her not to act so stuck up, and he keeps her from leaving. Sakura then explains that what he hates the most are weak people who think they are strong. Sakura interferes with the gang of harassers and tells them that it's too early to be acting so lame. The leader tries to attack Sakura, but unfortunately he is one of the types that Sakura hates the most. Sakura easily drops this guy and wonders what could possibly be going on in his head that makes him think that he is strong when he is not. Sakura demands that they drill his name and face into their brains so that they can tell all the weak people they know to run away from him when they see him. Sakura is some kind of psychopath as he also wants them to know his name so that they can tell all the strong people how to find him. He declares that he is Sakura Hakura from Furin High School. Sakura leaves these jerks but the girl stops him to say thank you. Sakura is confused and wonders if she is talking to him. She confirms that she was, and Sakura makes it very clear that he actually didn't do that to save her. He only beat those guys up because they annoyed him. Sakura declines her offer to eat something, but she ends up feeding him anyway. She can tell that he isn't from this town, and it's pretty rare for anyone to come visit. She explains that the gang he had just fought has been causing a lot of problems, and the town's public safety has become non-existent. She admits to not being from this town either, and introduces herself as Tachibana. Sakura can't understand why she's being so nice, since most people would be afraid of him, especially after he just beat up five guys. Sakura begrudgingly eats her food when she asks him to, but he is shocked by how amazing it is. He wonders if her restaurant does take off, but she corrects him as the dummy is trying to say take out. Tachibana points out that his eye and hair colors are all out of whack, and he wonders if she has a problem with it. She is more amazed than anything, but the paranoid Sakura thinks she wants to brawl. Sakura is surprised because normally people are grossed out by his appearance and they demand that he dye his hair. Sakura explains that looks don't matter in a fight and that is why he came to Furin. Furin is known for having students with the worst grades, but they are also the best fighters. They are the people that slip through the cracks at other schools and end up at Furin. Here, fractions brawl every day to decide who is on top. Their dedication to fight is so strong that they even fight on holidays and Sakura is determined to become the top dog. Tajibana points out that this is aiming pretty high but Sakura reveals that the reality is he is just as dumb as a brick and fighting is all he knows. To him though nothing sounds better than fighting to be number one and this place is perfect for him. It soon becomes clear to Tachibana why he is in uniform already when school doesn't even start until tomorrow. It's because he's excited. The embarrassed Sakura explains that he just moved so he didn't have anything else to wear, but she just teases him more. Our boy Sakura resorts to fighting as always and demands that they take this argument outside. Just then, one of Tachibana's elderly customers almost forgets his to-go bag, but Sakura reminds him. As Sakura heads home, he thinks about how strange that entire interaction was. The old man gave him some candies and told Tachibana to thank him. Sakura isn't used to so much praise, so he calls the entire town weird including Tachibana. He points out that he's wearing the uniform of a school of delinquents and his appearance is really strange as well. It doesn't make sense for people to be thanking him. Normal people would be on their guard around him and wouldn't trust him. Sakura once picked up someone's wallet and they accused him of stealing it. Just then, Tachibana explains that Sakura made the right choice by coming to Furin, but unfortunately there's no possible way he will become the top dog. Shockingly, she states that he might not even beat anyone there, let alone be top dog. Sakura points out that she has no clue how strong he is. She acknowledges that he might have strong muscles, but explains that he still won't be able to become top dog. The problem that he has is that he is all alone. Sakura becomes furious and declares that he's not so weak that he needs to rely on anyone else to win. As he leaves, Tachibana clarifies that she isn't talking about physical strength. 
She recommends that he go meet some Furin kids since then he will understand. Nearby, a group of hoodlums wreak havoc and some poor lady calls someone for help. Sakura runs into the guys from earlier and the leader is surprised that he came. He calls our boy Furin trash but Sakura just tries to ignore him. The leader points out that he didn't forget his face and mocks Sakura for his appearance. This guy is shocked though when he realizes that this is Sakura's real hair and eye color. They thought that he was just doing some terrible cosplay, but he points out that it being real is even more disgusting. Sakura smiles as this is what a normal reaction to his appearance is supposed to be like. This is the disgust that he has gotten used to, but it's okay because he has given up on that end. Sakura still wants to feel like he has value though. If he can beat whoever is in front of him, then he can feel like he is better than them. The problem is that Sakura can't stop thinking about how Tachibana told him that he won't be top dog because he is alone. The leader declares that his gang will start a war against Furin for Sakura punching him, but Sakura isn't even listening. He's still focused on Tachibana's words as he punches the leader again and he declares that he isn't the one avoiding people. Sakura lets out his true feelings about his appearance. It doesn't make sense how people act. He knows better than anyone that he looks weird, but he never did anything to the people that insult him. This is just who he is. Sakura starts beating down on this huge group of thugs. In his mind, as long as he is the strongest and the best fighter, he will be top dog. Being alone has nothing to do with it. The gang tries to attack him all at once, but it's no use as Sakura is far more skilled than them. Sakura instantly takes on any opponent that comes near him, and the fight is somehow heavily one-sided, even though Sakura is outnumbered. Just then, one of the thugs takes Tachibana hostage, but he pays dearly for this very stupid move as Sakura instantly knocks him out. Tachibana thanks him, but Sakura once again explains that the thugs just pissed him off. They tried to use a knife, so he tells the idiots to keep the fight clean. One guy tries to sneak up on him, but he just ends up learning a valuable lesson. Sakura fights off even more of them, but he is hindered by having to stay in one place to defend Tachibana. He wonders why he's defending her in the first place and reminds himself that helping others never ends well. Still, Sakura continues to defend her, but eventually one of the thugs uses the knife to cut his leg. Sakura is in a really bad spot now and thinks about how this is why he doesn't defend people. He once again questions why he decided to help her and prepares to take a bat right to his skull. Just then, someone stops the attack and Sakura notices that this stranger is wearing a Furin uniform. This guy surprisingly stopped the bat with his back and he tells Tachibana not to tell a certain person that she was in danger. This guy wipes out the bat wielder and tells the punks that they made a real mess in this town. His buddies arrive and the guy furiously tells the gang that they are in big trouble. Backup has arrived but they are disappointed to see so few opponents as they didn't all need to come to fight. Sakura is in absolute shock as he can't understand why Furin is saving him. The thugs are terrified to see the one named Hiragi, but they are confident they can win since they outnumber them by a lot. Hiragi tells the others to make quick work of these guys, so they begin to absolutely demolish them. One guy goes to attack Sakura, and Sakura gets caught in a terrible spot as his leg can't move. Hiragi saves him again and tells Sakura to stand back if he is hurt. Sakura furiously points out that he is not his boss and explains that the thugs were his to fight. Hiragi just tells him to stop moving around since it makes it harder for them to protect him. Sakura is completely shocked and he looks around to find that the people of the town are cheering on the Furin guys. Sakura can't believe what he is hearing and Tachibana reminds him about how she said that the town's public safety was nearly non-existent. However, this was only true up until two years ago. That all changed and it was all thanks to the students of Furin. The first thing they did was put a notice board at the town's entrance. It states that if someone brings trouble to their town by harming people or property, they will be the ones to purge them no matter who they are. Tachibana explains that somewhere along the line, the townspeople gave the Furin students a new name. Because they fight to protect the town, they are known as the town's bow Furin shield called Windbreaker. After the fight, all the townspeople come out to thank the boys. Although they used to be known as low-grade hoodlums, the Furin students are now well respected in the community. However, they still do fight quite a bit. They are beloved by everyone, but most importantly, they are needed. Sakura is shocked at how different this town is since the fighters are treated like heroes. They have the appearance of thugs and they even fight all the time, but no one is afraid of them. Sakura is overwhelmed with emotion and he is shocked when the townspeople tell him that he did a great job holding on on his own. 
Some little old lady even offers to treat his wound, but Sakura can't take all the kindness and demands that they all stop. Tajibana calmly begins to tend to his wound and reminds him that she said that he was alone. However, she explains that she could tell right away that he was unchoosing to be. She can't figure him out completely, but she explains that the people of this town need his strength. Sakura can't handle everything that's happening, and he declares that he doesn't need anyone and doesn't get involved. Tajibana is quick to point out though that his actions say something different. He reminded the old man about his bag, and he also fought hard to protect her. Tajibana points out that he actually hasn't given up on people, and he doesn't have to. At the very least, she declares that she won't turn her back on him, so she asks that he turns towards her as well. Tachibana is sure that this will be the way he can become who he wanted. Sakura still has a hard time accepting it all, and he makes a mad dash towards the others. He leaps into the air and points out how the delinquents seem to be playing hero now. He admits that all this stuff about being the town shield sounds really cool, and he absolutely destroys the gang's leader that was terrorizing the town. Everyone watches in shock, and Sakura wonders if people were really stuck by him there. We then learn that this is the story about how a low-grade pariah who only knows how to fight became the town's hero. Sometime later, Sakura arrives at Tajibana's restaurant, fears for having to carry old grandma Sato. She fears that she might get hurt getting off his back, but he just tells granny to hurry up. Grandma Sato shocks our boy with her dismount, and he is furious since she told him that her hips hurt so much that she couldn't walk. The old lady thanks him, but Sakura still doesn't know how to handle such kindness. Tachibana stops him from leaving and gives him some food as today is his entrance ceremony. It's still pretty early though, so she once again determines that he is all pumped up to go to school. He denies it, but she completely understands since there are a lot of interesting characters at Furin. Just then, some kid named Nire arrives, falling flat on his face. He wonders what Tachibana thinks about his new uniform, but Sakura points out that he still has the tags on his jacket. Nire manages to get all the tags off his clothes, and Tachibana informs Sakura that the two of them will be in the same grade. Nire notices Sakura's strange hair and eye, so Sakura thinks he might have a problem with it. Nire is surprised by his attitude, and determines that Sakura must have it rough, always being so stressed out at his young age. Nire tries to figure out why some nobody like Sakura came to their town. Sakura is insulted, but Tachibana assures him that Nire is like that with everyone. Nire eagerly points out that Furin High is no ordinary school. Members of both Furin stood up to protect the locals. They defend the weak and crush the wicked, so they are heroes of justice. Everyone that comes to Furin admires them, and they all want to help protect the town as well. Nire is one of them, but he wonders why someone with no ties to Furin like Sakura came to their town. Sakura makes his intentions very clear and reveals that he is there to take the top spot. Protecting the town is great and all, but there are a lot of strong people here and Sakura just wants to be the best among them. Nuri gets very serious and tells him that he shouldn't say things he will never be able to do. His reason for saying this though is because he fears Sakura will go bald. Sakura has had enough of his little comedy routine, so he demands that they fight, but it's getting late. Nire must leave as he wants to do three rounds of town patrol before the entrance ceremony. He declares that starting today he will be a hero of justice, but he shows just how clumsy he is as he leaves. Tachibana points out how funny the kid is, but Sakura can't believe a dork like him wants to be a hero of justice. Tachibana is surprised to hear Sakura talking about someone else's looks, but Sakura meant that guys like him are the type to always chicken out in fights. To him, nothing is lamer. Tachibana says it's just his assumption, but Sakura explains that he has seen it a sickening amount of times. Tachibana then takes a moment to teach him something. She points out that the coffee fruit is a much different color than the coffee beans that she has in jars. The lesson is that if you look at things only from one perspective, you will never see its true shape. She doesn't think he should be so quick to make assumptions and encourages him to get to know people better so he can figure out what they are really like. Sakura really takes in this valuable lesson, but he just figures that she means Nire is a good fighter. Tachibana is disappointed as she wonders if fighting is all he cares about. After he leaves, Sakura still thinks he is right. Just then, he is stopped and offered some free bread. He's pretty confused, so the baker explains that fearing kids are always helping out the town, and he just wants to give back. They recognize Sakura as the one who stood up against the gang the day before, and point out that everyone is talking about him. 
Sakura doesn't know how to handle praise and leaves, but they insist that he take some sandwiches for lunch. As Sakura goes through town, he finds that several other people feel the same way. Sakura can't figure out what's going on and wonders what is wrong with all the people in this town. They're acting way too nice to a guy like him, but Sakura realizes that he was just assuming that they would treat him poorly. Just then, Sakura is shocked when a girl begs him for help. In some alley, Nirei gets beat up for stopping a guy from bothering a girl. The guys just mock him for thinking he could protect the town, and they declare that he's the one that needs protecting. Nirei tries to make them take it back, but he just gets pushed around. The guys are surprised though when Nirei declares that those who cause pain or bring destruction to the town will be purged by both urine. The guys all have a good laugh and point out that only guys in superhero shows talk like that. The leader gets really annoyed and declares that it doesn't matter if Nirei is a windbreaker, he is the one that will be purged. The guy prepares to attack him, but Sakura shows up just in time to help Nirei. Nirei is shocked and wonders why Sakura is saving him, but Sakura doesn't even pay him any attention. The bullies laugh as Sakura is there to save his buddy, but Sakura is insulted by that. He reveals that it's not true, and he just hates weaklings that think they are strong. Sakura declares that it makes him sick, so the bullies decide to show him what they can do. Nirei fears for his safety as he is sure that Sakura can't fight them on his own, but there's nothing to worry about as the guys are all unconscious just seconds later. Nirei is surprised that he handled them in the blink of an eye, and he wonders just who Sakura is. Nirei is terrified of him now, but he still thanks Sakura for his help. He is sure that Sakura is disappointed that someone like him is in both Furin and attending Furin High, but Sakura just points out that he wasn't saving him. Sakura calls him a typical poser and warns Nirei that he should know what he is and is not capable of. Nirei explains that he always used to get beat up in middle school. One day, he was saved by someone from Furin, and it was someone that he would normally be scared of. In that moment though, the guy was really cool, so Nirei wanted to be just like him. Nirei came to Furin to become just as awesome, but he breaks down as he realizes that he is just pathetic. Sakura thinks about how he assumed that Nirei was the type to chicken out in fights, but it's clear that he actually stood up for himself. Sakura tells Nirei that he is a weak fighter, but there is a chance that he might not be that lame. Nirei is shocked and the girl he protected arrives to thank him for sticking up for her. She thanks Sakura too, but he tries to get out of there. Nirei stops him and once again breaks out his little book. He bombards Sakura with questions about his height, weight, blood type, and hobbies. The kid goes crazy analyzing Sakura and taking notes on him. Sakura stops him so Nirei explains that he just likes gathering data on guys he likes and thinks are cool. Sakura just tells him to do whatever he wants, so Nire takes this as an invitation to watch Sakura up close and personal. Nire offers to show him around and reveals that while he might not be any help in a fight, he is the best guide when it comes to the town and the people living there. Sakura is then surprised when Nire declares that he can guide Sakura all the way to the top. Moments later though, Nire must encourage Sakura to get going, but he is busy eating because he gets really hungry after fighting. Sakura is amazed by how good the bread is, and Nirei gets caught up in it too, but he realizes that they have to hurry up and go to school. The two eventually make it there, and Sakura is excited since there will be a bunch of people like those guys he met before. Nirei finds the class roster, where he is delighted to find that he and Sakura are in the same class. Nirei is amazed by all the other names on the list, but he doesn't actually know them personally, they are just people he admires. Sakura doesn't think it matters who is in their class, but Nirei points out that they will be spending a lot of time around these people. Just then, Nirei is shocked by one name in particular, and Sakura points out that he has lost all his energy. Nirei gets over it though to ask that Sakura try to be friendly to everyone in class, and he tries to encourage him to smile at them. Sakura thinks he must be joking, but Nirei points out that members of both Yurin gathered together to protect the town. Sakura is not from there, so the guys definitely won't like that, and they will ask Sakura why he came to Furin. Nirei thinks it will be very important to show that Sakura is harmless, and not both Furin's enemy. Sakura isn't even listening though, as he is warming up. Nirei wonders why, and he is shocked when Sakura says that he's just getting ready for anything. Nirei is disappointed that he wasn't listening, and points out that as an outsider, even the slightest misunderstanding could turn the entire school against him. Sakura doesn't actually care if every single person turns against him, and he reminds Nirei that he is there to fight his way to the top. 
Sakura enters the class, and Yurei is horrified when it becomes pretty obvious that everyone is staring at him. The class is filled with tough looking students, but Sakura couldn't ask for anything better. One student knows who Sakura is, but Sakura instantly has his guard up. Nirei apologizes for him and instantly recognizes this student from his book, however the kid says he is Leonardo DiCaprio. Sakura falls for it at first, and Nirei had no clue that this cold looking dude could be such a jokester. Nirei knows that his name is actually So, and So says that his eye patch steals away an ancient Chinese spirit in his right eye. Sakura loses his temper when he realizes that the kid is all talk, but So gets serious and approaches Sakura. The moment becomes tense as Nirei fears that people from out of town really are treated as anomalies. Sakura prepares for a fight, and Nirei is terrified that there might not be a way to stop it. Just then, he is shocked when So just pats Sakura on the back and compliments him for being the star of the Main Street Brawl that happened the day before. The other students wonder what he's talking about, so So explains that before Hiragi arrived at the brawl, Sakura was the one protecting the town first. Nire didn't even know this, and the other students begin to gather around Sakura. There were rumors about an unknown student in their uniform, and they are glad that this person did a good job helping the town. They're a bit too close for comfort, but Nire determines that this is better than them turning against Sakura. It's pretty clear that they won't think of him as their enemy, so Nire relaxes as the person he feared before should be okay with Sakura too. The guys still wonder why he came to Furin in the first place, so Sakura reveals that he came for the top spot. They are all surprised, so Nire tries to explain that Sakura isn't there to hold them down and beat them up. Sakura says that he actually is, but his new buddy tells them to let him handle this. Just then, a table gets tossed, and it's some terrifying student. Sakura gets an excited look on his face, but Nire begs him not to fight this guy. He is the most dangerous guy in their class, and might even be the most dangerous in the entire school. His name is Kiyotaro. Sakura declares that he prefers fighting mad dogs like him, so Kiyotaro says that he will crush him. Kiyotaro throws a powerful punch, but Nire is shocked when he realizes that So instantly moved him out of the way. Sakura dodged it as well, and compliments Kiyotaro as the type he expected to see in Furin. Kiyotaro gets even more upset, but this is exactly what Sakura was hoping for. Nire is terrified, but So is glad to see some sparks flying. So explains that Sakura's mistake was saying that he would be top dog in front of Kiyotaro. Sakura does his best to dodge all of Kiyotaro's attacks, while So explains that Kiyotaro has been visiting Furin High School since he was in middle school. In recognition of his determination, Kiyotaro was the only person allowed to call himself Bo Furin before officially starting. He has such an extreme loyalty to the top dog that he has earned himself the nickname, the top dog's fanatic. Another student begs that So stop the fight since he is sure that the new student will have his life taken by Kiyotaro, but everyone is shocked when Sakura dodges another attack and lands a counter. Sakura points out that Kiyotaro is a fan of the top dog, which means that he can't think for himself. He probably can't even make his own choices, so Sakura explains that a guy like that has no chance of beating him. The bloodied Kiyotaro is furious, so the two go in for some more fighting, but they are interrupted by an announcement. The person on the other end fumbles around with the microphone, but eventually welcomes all the students to Furin. Sakura is annoyed about being interrupted, so he just wants to get back to the fight. However, the other students are completely focused on the announcement, and Sakura wonders who the guy is that was able to get their attention. The guy introduces himself as Umamiya, and Sakura realizes that he is Furin's top dog the strongest guy in Furin. Everyone waits eager to hear what he has to say, but Omimiya says that he forgot. He decides to just tell everyone to remember to enjoy their youth. They are in high school now, so they should try to make a lot of memories. He suggests that they all go to the beach and get some shaved ice. Nire can't believe what this tough guy is saying, but Kiyotaro thinks that he's trying to make fun of the top dog. Umamiya believes that with so many students there's bound to be some friction, but he assumes that they're not troublemakers who would start a fistfight on the first day. Kiyotaro tries to hide the fact that they are troublemakers fistfighting on the first day, so he wipes away the blood on his face. Umamiya then gets real serious for one message, and he tells everyone to defend the town. They were given the name Bofurin, so they must protect the people and everything important. That is the school's one and only rule, so all the students accept. Sakura is shocked that this guy isn't even in the room, but everyone is eager to obey his orders, and he wonders just how strong of a fighter Umamiya is. 
So wants the two fighters to shake hands in a grand display of youthful understanding, but Sakura doesn't even think the fight is over yet. Nirei wonders why Sakura is getting so red, but Sakura just silences him. So reminds Kiyotaro that Umamiya wouldn't like to hear that he was fighting a classmate, and he tells Sakura that showing respect to other students is important if he wants to be top dog. Kiyotaro surprisingly wants to shake hands, so Nirei begs Sakura to hurry up and do it. Sakura prepares to do so, and reminds himself to just shake it. Sakura must have been through some serious hardship, because he must remind himself not to slap Kiyotaro's hand away or throw him to the ground. Sakura shakes his hand, but thinks about how touching people outside of a fight feels really weird. So is glad to see that their youth is burning bright, but their grip is so tight that they both wonder if the other is actually a gorilla. The other students celebrate, and they are amazed that Sakura actually managed to land a hit on Kiyotaro. Sakura is surprised by how nice they are being, but he realizes that it has been this way the entire time since coming to Furin. Sakura has gone silent with his thoughts, but the other students just wonder if he got choked out. Sakura joins the fun as he points out that he wouldn't get choked out so easily. In his mind though, he thinks about how he had no idea that people could be so friendly. Just then, the students are told to go outside, and moments later, Sakura is surprised that they have to paint over some graffiti. Sakura has no clue why they are doing this, but Niri takes pride in doing a good job, and so compliments his painting skills. A look back to just before this painting moment shows what happened when they were told to go outside. The student that demanded them to do it explains that he will get in trouble if they are too slow. It took them almost 8 minutes to get outside, so Hiragi explains that toddlers are faster than them. Sakura tells Nirei that he saw Hiragi when he saved Tachibana, but Hiragi overhears him and gets furious. Sakura is never supposed to mention that Tachibana was there, and Hiragi explains that he will be in big trouble if it gets out that Tachibana was in danger. Hiragi threatens that something bad will happen if he doesn't listen, but this just ends up being that he will start coughing up blood. Hiragi takes some stomach medicine and explains that he doesn't know what brought Sakura to this school, but he chose one tough general to be under. Nirei wonders what Hiragi was like, so Sakura explains that he's the type of weirdo to stress himself into a stomach ache, then has to take a Gaskun 10 pill. Nirei diligently takes notes on Hiragi and explains that he is doing it because Hiragi is one of the school's four kings. Umamiya sits at the top of both you're in, but just below him are his generals, the four kings. Each one basically acts like a captain for all three years of a given class. Hiragi has the students split up into groups with the second or third year as their captain, and he explains that they will be going to patrol the town. Hiragi is the captain of Sakura's group, which also has Nirei, So, and Kiyotaro. Kiyotaro and Sakura are in the same group because Umamiya told Hiragi to keep a close eye on the troublemaking fist fighters. The guys are surprised that he knows about the fight, so Sakura points out that he was just defending himself. Hiragi has to pull them apart so they can continue patrolling. Sakura points out that all they are doing is walking around and wonders why they aren't beating up some intruders. However, Hiragi points out that that would be offense, not defense. Walking around in their uniforms is enough to scare away the smaller gangs, so that is what they are doing. Sakura thinks that's just boring, but Hiragi points out that only enjoying fights doesn't make him much fun either. Just then, Hiragi does his duty as he helps an old man on a ladder. We then learn that this is why the guys were painting. They are helping the old guy paint over graffiti, as this is also Bofurin's job. When they are done, they are given food as a thank you. Hiragi completely understands how Sakura only cares about fighting, since all the other Bofurin guys used to feel the same way. However, they eventually realize that being needed by the people of the town is fun too. Sakura gives it some thought and takes a bite out of the snack. They arrive at a tunnel, where Sakura sees a symbol of a pretty ugly looking dog. Nirei wishes he would be more careful with his words, and he explains that they are at the border between both your ends and another team's territory. Past these train tracks, they have their own rules, and it's like a totally different country. It would be really dangerous to cause any trouble there. The other team's symbol is the lion head, and they believe that strength is everything. This is supposed to terrify outsiders, but that's the kind of motto Sakura likes. Just then, the group sees that a fear in middle schooler is being chased by Lion's Head members. It becomes clear that this kid won't make it past the train tracks in time, so Hiragi just lowers his head as there is nothing that can be done. However, just then, everyone is shocked when Sakura and Kiyotaro attack the Lion's Head member. 
Nirei is terrified of what they have done since they aren't supposed to interfere in the Lion's Head turf. Sakura says that the kid is on their team, so Sakura and Kiyotaro both point out that this means that the Lion's Head members interfered first. Sakura tells Kiyotaro to go away as he can handle this on his own, but he doesn't listen. The Lion's Head members mock their teammate for getting knocked out by one kick, but Sakura thinks about how ruthless they are since he is supposed to be their teammate. Just then, the Lion Heads get terrified when someone shows up after seeing what happened. Hiragi can't believe that this guy showed up out of all people, and he reveals that he is the Lion Head's second in command named Togame. Togami wonders what's going on and casually greets Hiragi when Hiragi explains that the guys were chasing one of their own. Sakura gets annoyed by how laid back this guy is, but he can see that he's the real deal when he can tell that Sakura and Kiyotaro were the ones that knocked out his team member. The knocked out guy gets up furious at them for breaking the rules and invading their turf, but Togami shocks everyone when he smashes a bottle over his head. Togami doesn't care if it was on their turf or not, he only cares that this kid lost the fight. Togami punches this guy relentlessly and explains that him losing means he is weak. The Lion's Head team doesn't like members that are weak, so he continues to beat him up, but Hiragi stops him. Hiragi points out that he is part of Togome's team, but Togome corrects him. He removes the guy's Lion's Head jacket and explains that their group doesn't need the weak. Everyone is in shock at this ruthless guy, but Sakura just thinks he is lame. He thought the Lion's Head believed that strength was everything, but he points out that beating up the weak doesn't really show strength. Sakura stands right up to this guy, disappointed after thinking that he found a fun group. Everyone is shocked to see him stand up to Togame, and the Lion's Head guys are sure that Togami will end his life for saying what he said. Surprisingly though, Togami is fine with it, and more curious about Sakura's strange hairdo. Togami also doesn't like how fast Sakura talks, and gets serious to point out that it pisses him off. Togami reveals that he has made his decision and explains that he will beat Sakura to a pulp when the time is right. He states that he has memorized Sakura's face and the Lion's Head guys leave. Nirei breaks out in terror as he points out that Sakura and Kiyotaro might have just started a war. So calms him down and points out that he doesn't want Nirei ending up like Hiragi. Hiragi is so stressed that he has to slam down some Gaskun 10 pills and Nirei tries to remind him not to exceed the recommended dosage. Nirei wishes Sakura didn't provoke Togame and points out that he might have let them go after the kick. Hiragi knows better and explains that Togame is probably the most territorial guy in Lion's Head. He wouldn't have let it slide, but what's done is done. Hiragi then shocks everyone as he acknowledges that he should have moved first and he apologizes. Hiragi tells a middle schooler named Sasaki to come with them so they can report to Umamiya. Sakura can tell that Hiragi's stomach is really giving him problems now, so Sakura wonders if he's really that afraid of reporting into Umamiya. Umamiya sounded pretty laid back during his announcement, so Sakura wonders what kind of guy he really is. They arrive at the roof of the school and everyone marvels at how incredible it is. Hiragi approaches Umamiya and Sakura prepares to meet the top dog at the school. All the students are shocked though when Umamiya is just excited about his plants. He wants to barbecue with everyone in the summer and Sakura wonders if this guy is really the top dog. Hiragi explains that they have got real trouble and all the boys are shocked when Umamiya reveals that he already knows. It isn't what they think though as the problem Umamiya is talking about is that they don't have enough seedlings to plant. Hiragi tries to explain that the problem is Lion's Head, but Umamiya just wonders if he wants him to plant some habaneros. The boys can tell that they are clearly not on the same page, but at least they have found out the cause behind Hiragi's stomach pain. Sakura can't believe that this guy is the top dog, but Kiyotaro demands that he show Umamiya some respect. Umamiya just now notices the other guys, so he shows them all his plants. Hiragi is frustrated that Umamiya never listens, and Sakura points out that all the plants look the same. This of course upsets Kiyotaro, and Umamiya tells him to have a closer look since all his plants are different. Sakura realizes that Umamiya was actually like this over the loudspeakers as well. He is kind of a goof, but his voice was all it took to get everyone's attention. Sakura isn't able to see it right now, so he wonders what it is about Umamiya that draws people to him. Sasaki can't take it anymore, so he decides to just explain what happened. He chased after a shoplifter, and before he knew it, he was in Lion's Head territory. Lion's Head chased after him, but he was saved by Sakura and Kiyotaro. 
Sasaki admires Bofurin a lot, and he just got carried away. He blames himself for sparking a clash with Lion's Head, so he apologizes. Umamiya somehow knows his name, and everyone is shocked when Umamiya actually thanks him. He explains that Sasaki was protecting the people of the town, so he has nothing to apologize for. He then vows that they will take care of the rest. Umamiya then goes back to being casual, as he laughs at how Lion's Head must have hated getting kicked off their feet. Hiragi's in a great deal of stomach pain as he apologizes as well, but Umamiya points out that he can't take responsibility for everything. Nire agrees and points out that Sakura was the one that pushed things too far anyway. Umamiya wonders if he picked a fight, but Sakura explains that they said that strength was everything. They were actually really lame though, since they beat up on someone weaker. Everyone watches in amazement as Sakura didn't hold back and explained everything himself. Sakura fears he will be punished, but he is shocked when Umamiya agrees with him that Lion's Head has been acting pretty lame recently. He heard about what Sakura did on Main Street, and combined with what he did today, Umamiya can only thank him for protecting their family. All the guys are stunned when Umamiya calls him a reliable new little bro, but Kiyotaro clearly doesn't like it. Sakura finally realizes why everyone is drawn to him, and it's because Umamiya makes him feel safe. Sakura doesn't know how to handle situations like this, so he pushes his hand away and wonders who made him his big bro. It's not that big of a deal though, as Umamiya sees everyone in the town as family. Just then, Hiragi receives a call from a guy named Kaji, but he can barely speak and only says the words Lion's Head. Just then, the leader of Lion's Head calls for their attention. He drags Kaji behind him and introduces himself as Choji. He calls out Umamiya specifically and insists that they have a fight. Nire loses his mind as he is shocked that their leader came. Sakura, on the other hand, thinks about how Tagami was the second in command, and he becomes excited when he realizes that this leader must be stronger than him. Just then, Sakura is startled as he senses a terrifying power. He sees that Umamiya is preparing himself, but he has no clue what that feeling was. All the guys head outside, but Umamiya tells them all to stay back. Sakura angrily says that he wants to fight, but Umamiya has gotten very serious and simply declares that he will not repeat himself. Sakura is shocked and realizes that his legs won't move anymore. Umamiya has completely changed, so Sakura wonders if this is really the same guy. Umamiya tells Choji that he is holding one of his members, and everyone is shocked that Choji is just smiling right in front of him. Umamiya can be really terrifying, so they wonder just how crazy Choji must be. Choji is excited for a one-on-one -on -one fight. He points out that they started it, so they can't back down. Umamiya acknowledges that they started the fight, but he points out that Choji has done enough already. He has beat up several of his members, so Umamiya considers them even. Choji has a look around, so Nire is surprised that the guy just accepted that answer. Umamiya tells Choji to leave, but everyone is stunned when he attacks instead. Umamiya easily stopped the attack and exclaims that Choji is just as impatient as ever. Choji points out that he started a new fight, so it's Umamiya's turn to fight back. Umamiya wonders why he wants to fight so badly, but all the guys can't believe when Choji declares that it's not just about fighting. He specifically wants to take down Umamiya. Choji explains that he has gotten very bored after becoming top dog in Lion's Head. Umamiya is top dog in both you're in, but he seems to always be laughing and having fun. Choji doesn't think this is fair, so he wants to make Furin his. Nire thinks the kid is crazy, but Umamiya seems to know something. He understands that this something must have been rough for Choji, but Choji has no clue what he's talking about. Just then, Choji is surprised when his other members arrive, and this causes the Bofurin guys to step up. Togami calls Sakura reverse C, and Sura calls him Shaggy. Umamiya tries to stop the guys, but Sakura explains that while he won't interfere in a duel, he can't just stand by and watch an invasion. His response is surprising, but Umamiya seems to be pleased with it. Choji wishes everyone would leave so he could have a one-on-one -on -one with Umamiya, but Togami doesn't think that's an option anymore. He points to the school, and we see that all the Furin students are angry and ready for battle. Nire panics as things could get really bad really fast, but Umamiya tells everyone not to make a move. Umamiya agrees to fight Choji one-on-one, -on -one, just as long as he tells his guys to back down. One of them insults Umamiya for being afraid of battle, but Kiyotaro warns him to watch his mouth. The guy keeps antagonizing, but another Lion's Head guy points out that Kiyotaro was one of the guys at the bridge. So makes fun of the way this guy talks, so Togami calms everyone down. 
Everyone is then surprised when he suggests that they save their duel for another day, as it's getting dark. His reason is pretty evil though, as he points out that it's hard to see, people's faces get smashed in at night. He wonders if Reversi agrees with him, but Sakura points out that his face would be the one getting smashed in. Choji can tell that these two have a grudge against each other, so he suggests that everyone get involved. He doesn't recommend an all-out brawl, but instead he wants to have a bunch of one-on-one -on -one fights. Togami agrees, so they decide that Umamiya will face Choji. Sakura will fight Togame, Kiyotaro will face the blonde guy, and So will fight the quiet guy. Umamiya thinks that him dueling Choji should be enough, but Sakura and the other guys agree to fight. The three of them are really eager, so Haragi can't believe this year's new kids. Just then, another Lion's Head member requests that he be allowed to fight. He chooses Haragi as his opponent, and Haragi is shocked as he seems to know this guy named Sako. The normally calm Haragi becomes furious, and he apologizes to Umamiya as he has decided to join the fight. The fight is decided, so they agree to put their teams on the line. The fight will be the next day, so Nire panics. Sakura tells him to calm down, but Nire points out that this is all his fault. Tachibane encourages him to eat something, as stressing out won't change anything, but Nire can't calm down. He fears what will happen if Umamiya loses, but Kiyotaro gets furious by the thought. Still, this means that Lion's Head would take over Bofurin, and Bofurin might even stop existing. Tachibana once again points out that stressing out won't do anything, and reminds Nire that the Bofurin guys aren't that weak. Sakura would like to leave after scarfing down his food, but Nire points out that he didn't eat his veggies. Even more importantly though, Umamiya and Hiragi haven't arrived yet. They are late, but Nire explains that they had to talk down everyone who was ready for blood. Sakura wonders why they wanted to meet at this cafe, and so explains that it's somewhat of a tradition for Bofurin to come to this place before a fight. Just then, Umamiya arrives, and he showers Tachibana with compliments. He even shows her his plants, and so points out that he is quite fond of Tachibana. Sakura wonders if she is his girlfriend, but they all call him an idiot. Umamiya points out that she is his little sister, but she explains that that isn't it either. It turns out that they were raised in the same situation, and Umamiya just started calling her his sibling on his own. Tachibana is relieved when Sakura doesn't think too much of it, but Sakura is surprised to hear that she's only 16, the same age as him. He points out that she is really mature, so he thought she was in her 20s. Kiyotaro can tell that Umamiya doesn't like this conversation, so he puts an end to it. Umamiya then terrifies Sakura by simply agreeing that Tachibana is very mature. Hiragi then explains that Umamiya protects Tachibana like crazy, and terrible things would happen if he ever found out that she was in trouble. Hiragi isn't eating, so he explains that he's just thinking about Lion's Head. Sakura wonders if they used to be different, so Hiragi explains that they believe in strength alone. They used to simply care about strong fighters. They have always had a lot of hotheads, but they never would have chased a middle schooler. Both Yurin once had a big clash with them. It was a huge brawl, but Hiragi remembers it being oddly satisfying. Since Choji took over, bad rumors started spreading. He has heard that Choji has been picking fights everywhere. Choji and Togame used to be symbols of strength who cared deeply for their team, so Hiragi laments how something has changed them. Umamiya suspects that it's the fault of someone named Tomiyama. Umamiya explains that they will probably find out more tomorrow, but Sakura points out that they will be fighting tomorrow. He doesn't think there will be much talking, but Umamiya explains that fights are conversations. Punches are a language that sometimes work better than words. However, that might only be true for guys like them. The night comes to an end, so Sasaki thanks everyone for saving him and hopes that they win the fight. Everyone accepts his apology, but Sakura points out that he isn't fighting for him. Tachibana calls him a dope and tells him to say something cool like leave it to me. This reminds Sakura of how that's exactly what Umamiya said, so he says it too. The next day, the Bofurin guys arrive at the tunnel and enter the Lion's Head territory. Sakura thinks about how this is the first time he has ever fought for someone else. He isn't sure why, but for some reason, he feels more unbeatable than ever. Choji welcomes them to his territory, and Umamiya declares that they are ready. Thanks for watching my recap. Sign up to my free newsletter if you want to show some support to the channel. Link is in the description.